In this video, I will share 10 Google Tag Manager mistakes that you should avoid. Hey, Julius from the future here. Only when I started editing this video, I realized that apparently I don't know how to count to 10. That's why in this video, I will actually share nine mistakes, which is quite ironical because the video is about mistakes and I did a mistake, so yeah. Of course, there are many more mistakes that can be done. Yep. But I will focus on the most common ones in my opinion. The first one is common among beginners. If you are working with a data layer and you have some data point that you want to send to a vendor, for example, Google Analytics, your tag must fire after that data is in the data layer. For example, if a page category is pushed to the data layer after the initialization event, but your Google Analytics tag fires before it, it will not be sent to GA4. The order of events on the left sidebar of the preview mode matters, and you can use the data only after it becomes available. In this case, you have two options. Either fire your Google Analytics tag later, after the data is in the data layer, or ask the developer to push the data earlier. If you want to have page category or any other parameter before the initialization event, the data layer push code should be done before GTM container starts to load, and that push must not contain the event key. The next mistake is not thoroughly testing your setup. At minimum, you should use the GTM preview mode to make sure that your tag fired and it used the correct data. But it would be even better if you tested other places as well. First of all, you should look at the network tab of the browser developer tools to see if the request was actually sent. Also, check if the request was not blocked. Additionally, check the final destination of the request, which might be your marketing or analytics platform. In GA4, you have debug view. Check that. Other vendors might also have some real-time reporting capabilities. And at the end, check the non-real-time reports. You might need to wait hours or days, but definitely verify the reports to see if the data is displayed properly the way you expect. Mistake number three is related to form tracking. Your goal here is to track when the form was submitted successfully. However, beginners sometimes are tempted to track forms with a regular click trigger. In other words, if the form submit button is clicked, that is a successful submission. But what if some required field in the form is still blank? The button click will still be tracked even though the form was not submitted successfully. So never ever use the click triggers to track form submissions. Use other methods like element visibility trigger, thank you page tracking, form submission trigger, Ajax listener, or other methods that are available and apply to your situation. The next tip might sound boring, but your future self will thank you if you start doing it early. Have a proper naming convention for your tags, triggers, and variables. Items with random names in the container will make the maintenance of your container more difficult as the container grows. Be more specific with your names. Let's say that you have a tag that is called contact. What does this mean? Is it a click on a link, contact form submission, something else? Imagine if someone takes over your container in the future. They will get lost very quickly. So be nice and use some naming convention. For example, I use this one. The name of the vendor, the type of the tag, and then what that tag does. For example, the name of the GA4 event. For variables, I start with the variable type and then describe the variable. With proper naming convention, the items in your container will also be nicely sorted, which makes the work easier. Also, a bonus tip is for the container versions. When you publish a new version, at least give it a name. Briefly describe what was changed in the version. When you go back to the list of the container versions in a year or two, you will be able to find what you need faster. Because otherwise, the list of the container names will be empty and you'll spend much more time trying to understand what was done when. The next mistake is related to the container maintenance. You're not doing audits often enough. Remember, Analytics setups usually are not one-time jobs. In many cases, they are not something that you just set and forget. You or someone in your company should occasionally review the container and audit it, at least once a year. Otherwise, you will eventually end up with a hot pile of mess. People in companies change. Tools that they use change. I have seen way too many situations where Google Tag Manager containers still have tracking codes of tools that the company stopped using several years ago. Every additional code impacts your page performance, so you have to get rid of everything that is not necessary. Also, it would be good if the company had someone in charge of their GTM container, because if the company allows multiple agencies to work in the same container, eventually it will become a mess. 
This tip is related to the false expectations about Google Tag Manager. Even though GTM is positioned as a tool that will help you manage tracking codes faster without developer's help, you should still sometimes involve your IT department. The most robust solutions and setups are where marketers and developers cooperate. Developers can push necessary custom data to the data layer that you can use for multiple tags. Also, developers can quickly review custom codes that you want to add to the container. You should definitely let your developers check your codes. I've seen some situations where marketers found a blog post online, copied the code, implemented it in their container, and that code broke the interface of their SaaS product. Developers were not informed about this code, which resulted in longer troubleshooting session, more angry customers, and more lost revenue. I don't say that developers must be involved in every little thing that you do in GTM. No, I'm saying there must be a balance but your intention should never be to avoid developers at all costs. This next mistake is more specific for Google Analytics 4 users. You must learn the difference between event parameters and user properties. Check Google's documentation. Also, I explained that in my GA4 course, but if you are sending a parameter that you plan to use as a user scoped custom dimension, it must be sent as a user property, not as an event parameter. And if you are sending a parameter that you plan to use as an event scoped custom dimension, then set them as event parameters. Don't mix this. The next mistake is related to page performance. Every code that you add to the website slows down the site. In some cases, the change will be so small, you won't even notice. In other cases, it can add seconds to the loading time. If you install an empty Google Tag Manager container, it makes almost no impact on the page loading speed. I have done various tests about it but it's important what you put inside of that container. If you install 10 tracking pixels, then of course page performance will become significantly worse. So the first tip would be to question yourself, do you really need that many tracking pixels on a page? Maybe your company stopped advertising on some ad network. If yes, then remove that pixel from the container. That's one more reason why regular audits is a good practice. The moment when your tracking codes are fired on a page is important. The later you fire the tag, the less impact it will have on speed. Maybe some codes can be fired only when the page is fully loaded, like Hotjar or Microsoft Clarity. I share more specific tips about this in my blog post. You will find the link to it below the video. Also, keep an eye on page speed testing tools like webpagespeed.org. If you're making changes to the container, Test your page speed before this is published and after. If the page speed decreases significantly, then try to find a way to optimize this. The next mistake can happen if you migrated hard-coded tracking codes to Google Tag Manager. A hard-coded snippet means that the tracking code is implemented directly in the source code of the website. Anyway, if you migrate to Google Tag Manager, which means that you're now managing your tracking codes there, don't forget to remove the hard-coded snippets from the website's code. A developer should do that. Because if you fail to do so, you will be tracking duplicate data. For example, one page view is tracked by Google Tag Manager and one by the hard coding tracking codes. And the final mistake was quite common in the past. Now, after Google properly updated their data layer documentation, this mistake happens less often. But I think it's still worth mentioning. When developers are adding data to the data layer, they should always use the data layer push method. Alternatively, they might be tempted to use data layer declaration. Declaration works fine if it is done before GTM container snippet starts loading. But if data layer is accidentally declared after GTM snippet, then it will be broken and your setup will not work. So to avoid this accident, always use data layer push. And these were the most common Google Tag Manager mistakes in my opinion. Of course, there are more and I have shared additional tips in my blog post. You will find the link to it below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.